The Nakba was not one singular event, but a culmination of a colonization process that began in 1882 and reached its eventual climax on May 15, 1948, when Israel declared statehood and the Palestinians experienced their Nakba, which in Arabic means catastrophe. The Palestinian people were not only dispossessed and ethnically cleansed from their homeland, but were effectively denationalized. This counters the false assumption that Palestinians were always foreigners in the land to which they naturally belong. While the Palestinians were the clear majority in historic Palestine up until the start of the Nakba, Palestinian existence was irrelevant to the founding fathers of Zionism. The oft-repeated Zionist slogan, a land without a people for a people without a land, was necessitated to legitimize the Zionist project. There are various myths associated with the Nakba. I will focus on three of them. Myth number one, Palestinians left or fled their homes voluntarily. Now, Palestinian scholars have detailed the expulsion policy of the Zionist movement, and in later years, even Israeli historians have confirmed that fact using Israeli archival material. Plan Dalet or Plan D is recognized as the master plan for the ethnic cleansing of Palestine. According to Plan D, Zionist forces deliberately employed tactics of violence and terrorism aimed at forcibly removing Palestinians from their homes. The massacre of Dar es Salaam on April 9, 1948 was the most notorious massacre that generated terror and panic, leading to the mass displacement of Palestinians and eventual takeover of Palestine. Moreover, there was no evidence whatsoever that Arab leaders were broadcasting messages urging the Palestinians to leave their homes. The implication of this voluntary evacuation myth is that since the departure was voluntary, there's no right of return. The fallacy in that argument is that only forcibly displaced persons have rights to repatriation, compensation, restitution, and satisfaction. The Palestinian right of return is not diminished in any way, regardless of the circumstances under which they left their homes. Myth number two, the Arab countries initiated the war, and therefore they are responsible not only for the plight of the Palestinian refugees, but also for their flight. Now this myth relies on the notion that the refugee problem was the result of the Arab invasion. In fact, the opposite is true. It was the ethnic cleansing that caused the Arab invasion. Approximately 350,000 Palestinians were made refugees before the Arab invasion. The goal of this myth is to shift responsibility onto the Arab states as a basis for denying the refugees the right to return to their homes and to claim that it is the responsibility of the Arab states to absorb the Palestinian refugees by resettling them in their host countries rather than repatriating them to their home country. Myth number three, since Jews left Arab lands and Israel absorbed those refugees, Arab countries should do the same with respect to the Palestinians. This is popularly known as the population exchange myth. This is a Zionist talking point favorite. The problem with this argument is twofold. First, it's factually untrue. And second, even if it is true, the Palestinians are not the perpetrators and therefore not responsible. The process of Jewish absorption into Israel was motivated mainly by personal choice and based on individual circumstances rather than the collective Jewish community. They emigrated for various reasons, depending on the country, the time, the community, the economy, and in some instances, Zionist provocations, as in Iraq. So in one case, the Palestinians, you have dispossession. In the Jewish case, it was mainly emigration. The Nakba rests in the collective memory of Palestinians worldwide, in contrast to the Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem, where Jewish lives are remembered and memorialized. There is still no central collective database for Nakba victims. However, we will never forget the land. We will never forget the richness of our history and the beauty of our landscape. We will never forget.